Hello, it's a good afternoon here in London. It's a Saturday. And I was about to do something and I got time to talk about the time between eclipses, what it means, the positive and the negative. And I, I wanted to say two quotes before I started, because this is the theme of what the time between eclipses is all about. It's by Peter Drucker, and you, some of you will have heard it. Nothing, there is nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should not be done at all. And this is about wasting our time. We're doing something and spending a lot of time on something we shouldn't do because it's not a priority. There's nothing so useless as doing efficient, efficiently that which should not be done at all. And this also applies to our emotions, the emotional feelings where we're holding on to an emotion, a negative emotion or a positive emotion. And this negative emotion doesn't serve us. So what is it that we're doing? And, and the time between eclipses looks at extreme positives, extreme negatives, extreme feminine and extreme masculine. And also in terms of relation, relationship, I love this quote that I made. Never get mad at someone for being who they have always been. How many times are we mad in our relationships when the person is just being who they are and we want them to change? So never get mad at someone for being who they have always been. Be upset with yourself for not coming to terms sooner. So you're busy being angry with someone for who they have always been. Because they're not going to change. It's the way they are. Just be upset with yourself. Give yourself the grace. Just be upset with yourself for not accepting them as they are. For not coming to terms sooner that this is who they are. Because we all want to change someone and we always want to change ourselves. But we cannot force change. And the time between eclipses about the extremes and the judgments. Uh, hello, James uh, Newman. Nice to see you. Hello, Ryoko. Nice to see you. And Rosa. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, everyone. So uh, thank you for the loves and the likes. So what is the time between eclipses? What is it? What is, what is it that triggers our emotions? So the eclipse was the beginning of July. The first eclipse was a new moon in Cancer. That was the second. It was um, a, a, a masculine eclipse because it was a, a solar eclipse. So we're dealing with a masculine aspect. We're going to the uh, full moon, which is in Capricorn, and it's a feminine, a feminine eclipse. It's working with a feminine side. So the time between eclipses forces us that it's time to balance and look at our shadow, live with our shadow, walk with our shadow, look at the extremes of our feminine, and the extremes of our masculine. So what is it that is triggered during this time between eclipses? So the next moon meditation in Capricorn, which I will be holding, will be the 16th of July at 7 p.m. On, um, on Zoom. So I'll put the link below. And this is Buddha Day as well. So you're wanting to activate the feminine. The feminine aspect is coming. So the, the last new moon on the 2nd of July was about looking at the feminine aspect of the eclipse. Feminine is, yes, um, sorry, masculine aspect was a solar. Solar is the masculine. So we had a solar eclipse with a new moon. This uh, uh, full moon in Capricorn is a lunar eclipse. It's lunar. It's, it's feminine. So the eclipse tells us, hi, darling, Toksa, nice to see you. Uh, the, the eclipse is about looking at the aspects of us. So the eclipse takes us through our circle of life through our own individual karma and collective karma. It forces us to look at things that we don't want. So the time between eclipses is about working with the balance as the energy and transformation changes, changes in you, in your life. So there's a transformation, there's a concept of starting from now. So what is it that is triggered in the time between eclipses? You may have disappointments. You may have breakups. Your computer may have glitches. You may lose your contact. You may, you may just not be able to get the technology. So we have misunderstanding. 
We have miscommunication. We have disagreement. We have arguments. We have pointing fingers. So the time between eclipses looks at really the shadow. And what is it that's annoying you and irritating you? Where are you feeling fear? Where are you feeling blocks? Are you frightened of yourself? Are you frightened of your neighbors? Are you frightened of what people are saying or thinking about you? Well, what is the fear? What is the shadow that's coming out, that's looming, that's very ugly coming out? And this time between eclipses are time to be gentle, but you're going to be vulnerable. There's no way that even if you are hiding from yourself, this time between eclipses is going to force you in the privacy of your own space to look at the ugliness and the shadow within you, what you need to, to look at. So is it that you need to look at the aspect of your business? You need to collaborate or you need to just let go one or two relationships or you need to tidy up. What is it that you are so afraid of that is stopping you from moving forward? You know, we have to release this block and then we can point fingers and we can say it's somebody else. We can point fingers and we can say, you know, I've tried or you can give up. This time between eclipses, between this um, um, new moon and full moon in Capricorn, is very important. So um, the full moon is a feminine full moon on the 16th here in London. It's feminine. The new moon, which was in Cancer, was masculine. So again, we're look, looking at the extremes and how we're balancing our emotions, our relationships, our relationships with our business, with our family, with our friends, with our children. And what are the thought processes we have? And are we spending time doing something efficiently to avoid the reality of what we need to do? So the time between eclipses really asks us in the silence of our mind, in the labyrinth of your mind, to look at the areas that need to be balanced. So there's a time for sacred thinking, sacred being and sacred doing. And yet, the desire is to align to source, to the soul. But the time between eclipses shakes you. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. it shakes you. It's, it's like it's forcing you to look at things you need to look at, the things that irritate you, that frighten you, and the things that you are denying in yourself and in your life. So what could it be? What could be the fear? Um, I, uh, so it could be, you could find yourself doing sudden things like shaving all your head, breaking up with the person, saying you can't cope anymore. So your reaction can be sudden. It can be irrational. So don't try to justify or explain it. Go with where you're at. So the time between eclipses is about acknowledging where you are and walking with your, walking with your shadow and working with your shadow. So that's walking, like you're walking with a shadow, and the aspect is working, also working with your shadow. So the two are quite uh, difficult. So you can walk with your shadow and talk to your shadow and say, hi, shadow, nice to see you. <laughs> and what are you bringing to me today? Are you bringing me fear? Yeah, oh, okay, hi, hi. So you can walk with it, and you can talk to your shadow, and you can work with your shadow. And by working with your shadow, you're looking at it, you're facing it. Hello, shadow. How are you? So what have you brought me today? Fear? Grief? Anointment? What have you brought me? Ah, disappointment. Ah, disagreement. Ah. So you're, you, you, you talk to your shadow. You, you're not running away because you see, look, there's even a shadow on me. So the shadow is always there. So even in my life, our bodies, we make shadows with the light. And the eclipse is looking at the light and the dark within us, the time between. What, what needs, what does the light need to shine on? Is it that you need to go to a function and network? Is it that you need to not go to any function and just be on your own, in the silence of your mind, in your sacred space? Does that mean you need to go and just sit in the grass or go swimming and just be isolated and just go and reflect? Because you see, this really is a time to reflect. Because this time is so crucial. We're already gone half 2019. We're already in the half of 2019. So this time between eclipses is a time to sort of look 
But what have we done in the past six months of this year? What we're going to do in the next six months? But before we do that, we need to shake and get rid of, like a duck, a duck, a duck sort of gets in the water, then it shakes itself, and gets rid of all the negative energy. How are you getting rid of your negative energy? How are you working with your shadow, looking at your shadow, talking with your shadow? How are you dealing with your extreme feminine and your extreme masculine? So the extreme masculine will that you listen to me, I am right. If you don't do this, then I'm not. The, the, the. That's the extreme masculine. You do it my way or no way. And the extreme feminine is, oh, okay, what do you say? That's all right. I'll do that. It's so nice. This is fine if you are agreeing in your extreme that this is what you do. But you, if you're doing it from a point of, of fear, of being abandoned or not being alone, it's not a balance. So when we have the extreme feminine and the extreme masculine, it, it, we're not in balance. We're trying to please. We're trying not to be disappointed. We're trying not to disappoint people. We're even trying not to disappoint people who have disappointed us. <laughs> I love the time between eclipses. I really do. So hello, he hello Jenny Isidore. Hello, Marion Kutla. Is it Kutla? Thank you all for watching. So um, I hope this is uh, I'm making myself clear. If you have any questions, please write and I will see if I can answer them. So the quote I started says, never get mad at someone for being who they have always been. Get, be upset with yourself for not coming to terms sooner. Be upset with yourself for not coming to terms sooner to who they are. When you can love someone for who they are, you can love unconditionally. There are no conditions to the love. And this is very important. So I will just again recap the negative aspects of the time between eclipses. But are they really negative aspects? Are they really dark and shadowy? Or are they coming to help us deal with ego issues? Issues that need to be looked at. Is that person who is nasty to you, actually a friend in disguise, helping you to shift and move and align yourself to the true willpower of your karma? So are they helping you to shift your karma, your negative karma? Are they helping you to lift you and activate a quality like compassion and forgiveness? What is that person that's upsetting you, making you look at in your life? So the time between eclipses says, it's you, 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 you. But look at the others pointing at you. The other fingers, where? Are you wanting to activate the shadow in you and the shadow in them? And how are two shadows, two shadows from others just going like that? But if one shadow came and was a shadow and the other poured light on it, light, light, light. Just breathe in the light. Just breathe in the light. See, even as you're breathing in the light, Breathing the light, breathing the light, breathing the light, breathing the light. Even as, as you breathe in that light, you can feel the shadow sort of gets softer and, and there's light. Breathing in the light. So when two shadows come together, there's a misunderstanding, there's miscommunication, there's anger, there's rage, there's this, blame. You did this, you did that, you do that. Hello, Suzanne. March Bank, nice. Hello, Selda Goodwin. Thank you for being here. So time between eclipses is about power struggles in your relationship. Well, you didn't do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do this before you do this to me. Come on. How are you going to keep a relationship if you're going to be engaged in power struggles? How are you going to do that? If you commit to doing something, show up and, and commit. And if you can't, be honest and say, I'm not doing that. So if you find weird things are happening around you, you know, whatever they may be, weird, uh, the, the, the mirror suddenly breaks, the doors make a noise. These are signs and omens. Look out for signs and omens. What is, what's the message? Oh, the tap is dripping. Oh, I've got a leak. What is leaking? What is leaking in your life? Where is there a leak? 
Where is there a contamination? Where is there a disempowerment in your life? So the time between eclipses is telling you, let's look at the areas that we need to address. Let's look at the distortions. Let's look at the disempowerment. So is there a distortion in your mind? Is there a distortion that's actually making you stuck where you are? And you have the ego and the arrogance. I don't need your help. I don't need any help. I'm perfect where I am. And yet this distortion keeps you from moving forward. Keeps you from wanting to be more. Keeps you from healing. So what, is the, what are the delays? What are dis the disruptions in your life? You want to go somewhere and you end up somewhere else and you get lost. You know, that's a disruption. And then you find out, oh, you didn't need to get there. Something, as you were journeying, you got lost, and then you met someone, and they said something wise to you. Or you went somewhere, and then you realized, oh, you came out to the wrong station, and then there's a garden out there. Is the universe aligning you to connect more with nature? To connect more with your soul? So I got here, lack of trust, tension. Lack, feeling lack, feeling fear, unfulfilled, unresolved issues. How am I going to resolve this relationship? How on earth am I going to make them love me? How am I going to be loved more? How are people going to engage with me? And, and these thoughts, these fears, these insecurities are consuming you. How am I going to cook and feed myself? How am I going to take the children to school? How am I going to pay the bill for the car? How am I going to do my MOT? How am I going to pass this exam? How am I going to be a good friend? In fact, instead of how, maybe I'm not a good friend. Maybe I should just give up. So the time between eclipse really asks you to look at the shadow around you and in you. So you can look, at, oh, look at just what she's wearing. Oh, look at her. She always wears fluffs. Yeah, who does she think she is? Oh, she's, 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 she's colored. She's nothing. So you have the racist abuse. You have the sexual abuse. You have, oh, she's a woman. So we have all this abuse, all these stress and tensions and holdups where somebody comes and says something to you and hurts you. And you feel like maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. And even if they're right, learn the lesson from the statement. I say, could I be doing this, but I'm unconscious of it? So part of the exercise of the time between eclipses is for you to activate your unconscious and conscious and create unity consciousness and create balance to the divine and source yourself and align to the divine and the soul. And it's easier said than done. Hello, Mark. Uh, Pericles. Nice, such a lovely name. So hello, James. Hello, Ryoko. Hello, Rianne. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Zelda. Hello, Suzanne. Hello, Corian. Hello, Mark. Hello, those liking my page and saying hello and saying the stars. And you see, also the time between it keeps about muddling. Things are muddled up. Bills aren't paid on time. You were meant to have this and the documents got lost. So time between it keeps really looks at aspects of things going wrong that really trigger in you anger frustration and blame and yes you may be justified yes you may just feel justified in your pain and your anger she did this to me he did this to me okay then sit in that justification sit in it for a while and honor it honor your vulnerability so the time between eclipses is about honoring your vulnerability Honoring the way you feel, not pretending to the world. You can pretend, but when you're at home in the privacy of your mind and your space, it hits you. The real you comes out. The anger, the bitterness, the frustration, the lack, the hold up, the insignificance, the negative beliefs. And you're pretending to the world. You're pretending to yourself. Why not be honest? The time between eclipses about being honest in your relationships with yourself. What is your relationship with yourself? 
What is your relationship with your business? What is your relationship with your partner? What is your relationship with your children? And above all, what is the relationship with the soul, with the divine? That's mine. That's my expertise. Connecting you to source, to alignment, which I do with the moon meditations. So this moon meditation is going to be quite intensive. So this is just for you to know that all these emotions, all these emotions are very important. So when I'm celebrating the moon meditation in Capricorn, we'll be work looking at the practical aspect. So the Cancer new moon earlier on was about water and the emotions and the vulnerability. So if you're feeling all vulnerable and then it's up, say, well, I'm feeling vulnerable, I need to do this, I need to do this. Hey, it's the extreme, remember? Masculine, feminine, dark, light, solar, lunar, eclipses. So you may want to take control, but you know, nature, the natural forces are more powerful than you. The divine is more powerful than you. Mother Earth is more powerful than you. Please remember that and honor the sacredness. When you were born and you were delivered by the womb, you didn't control that. So you may need to control your relationship and people and abuse them. But remember, when you were being pushed out of the womb, you weren't controlling that. The divine, there was a power beyond you. Like you have eyebrows that you cannot see unless you look into a mirror. So there are many forces that you need to activate. So when you're feeling stagnant, you're feeling stuck, you're feeling blocked, you're feeling not listened to, not understood, that extreme negative, we have also the extreme positive. And the time between eclipse is about looking at the negatives and learning the lessons so what lesson did you learn today or did you learn in the past week, in the past, this time between? What are the lessons? So um, what did you have to do? What did you do? What did you promise yourself in the new moon? What did you see that it's going to manifest by this full moon? Perhaps you're um, changing your website. Perhaps you're rebranding re or doing your services. Perhaps you're getting married. You're speaking to your future. You're making a list of what it is that you want. Hello, Son or Shah. Nice to have you here. So what is it that you're doing? So the positive of the time between eclipses is change, transformation, alignment to source. However, we're going through the chaos. They say the lotus flower seeds and blooms in muddy water. This muddy water is the Saha world, is the time between the eclipses. So are you going to blossom and bloom like a lotus flower? Yes, yes you are. Of course you are. That's why you're here. <laughs> we're all going to blossom and bloom. We're going to shine like the sunflower. And we're going to be protected by the ascended masters, by Vishnu, by hands of light. We're going to be protected by the divine God, Adonai, Buddha, Allah. We're going to pray to the divine, whatever you call the divine. And you may not have a name, so it could be the source, great spirit. So you call on that. And you may not believe in anything but in yourself. And we say when that happens, that means you're a Buddha. You believe in the Buddha in you. The Christians say you believe in the Christ consciousness in you. So... It doesn't matter what anyone thinks. What matters is what you think right now, where you are now in the time between eclipses. So you want to activate good health. You want to be more empowered in yourself. You want to have better relationships. You want to have more engagement. How many times do you look at couples and they're out sitting down and they're looking at their phone? I don't know where my phone is. They're looking at their phone. They're not engaging. How many times do you see children, playgrounds or whatever, and people are looking at their phone? They're not engaging with the children. Are you engaging? Or are you doing the shadow side? Are you being eclipsed? Are you eclipsing aspects of your life? So yes, I am a mother. And I'm going out with my children. I'm spending time on my phone. Yeah, I'm you to 
responding to the texts, doing the business. But it's quality time with the children. It's quality time with your partner. So what are you doing? Uh, Sonal says, beautiful words and video, thanks. I agree with what you say, blossom and bloom. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sonal Shah, my deep respect. So it's important to blossom and to bloom, exactly what Sonal is sharing. Thank you so much. It's also to have a, a fresh start, honey meal. So this full moon, I'll be activating a fresh set start, but a blossoming of where you are right now without judgment and empowering you to move on to the next, to accept where you are, to bring in the love and the compassion of who you are, the opening of your heart through all the chaos and the blooming and blossoming because the full moon is about your blooming and your blossoming, your opening, your acceptance of where you are and you may not have accepted who you are or where you are. And that's where coming to a new meditation or coming to have a session with me helps as you illuminate and continue with your spiritual uh, development, your success, your, your rejuvenation, your inspiration. Ah, this is important. So important, your inspiration. So important to be inspired by people who want to inspire you, who have the ability to inspire you, and they come from a heart of love and compassion. You are like that. Many people are like that around you. Honor that. Honor that, because it's important. Hello, Ben Chai. Nice to have you. My deep respect to you. So with the aspects of the time between the eclipses, you're talking about karmic shifts. You're talking about the lessons you need to learn and learning the lessons and saying, oh, it's my fault or it's both our faults. Let's, let's find a middle way. Let's find a balance. Let's stop arguing. It's just useless and a waste of time with all the disappointment. You have enough disappointment in your life to create more. You have enough sadness and you've had enough sadness in your life to create more. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Only you can stop it. You can come for sessions with me for me to help you. But if you have not made that decision, nothing's going to change for you. You have to make that decision and stand up to your shadow. Stand up to yourself first. So you're busy standing up to people. I'm going to prove that person. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Hey, hey, hey. What about your own lessons to learn what are you putting flowers in heaven beautiful red roses and flowers in heaven or is it full of black flowers dark flowers unhappy flowers the time between um eclipses asks you to exceed your own expectation and honor who you are honey meal honey meal this positive aspect of the eclipse comes when you are ready to say, I'm ready. I'm ready for my own personal development to accept where I am. I'm ready to heal. I'm ready for better health. I am ready. And you accept it. And you can be ready. And that's nice. But you may feel, okay, maybe I need to see Turks Cooper and do one of her new meditations. Maybe I need to book a session with her. She's, she says some strange things and it makes sense, but maybe she can help me. But if you don't come, you won't know whether or not I can help you. I can do all this and gift this all to you because this is who I am. I want to and I choose to. But wanting more refined work, more rejuvenation, more enlightenment, more spiritual development takes time and is a decision you do. For yourself in your change your karmic change your karmic consciousness and your unity consciousness so the time between eclipses asks you to look at this extreme masculine and feminine in you your extreme um, shadows in you the extreme feminine shadow the extreme masculine shadow are you walking with your shadow are you working with your shadow or are you just putting your head in the sand 
and deciding I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to bother. I, I don't need change. I'm fine. And you're in denial. So going back to what Peter Drucker said, I wrote up there. There is nothing more useless than doing efficiently that which should not be done at all. And that involves wasting our emotions on things that aren't serving us and deciding, to, you know, I need to change myself. I need to look at my emotional intelligence. I need to look at my mental intelligence. I need to address my spiritual intelligence. I need to address my physical intelligence. I need to look at the areas in my life that I need to transform so I can have better health, better mindset, better emotion, better spiritual. Align myself to my truth to find out what it truly is. And this is done so easily in many ways. So I just wanted to uh, talk about all of this. These are my points. And perhaps we'll do a little exercise, shall we? So first of all, let's work with the sound. So be aware of all the shadow. And then let's release the shadow. Just release. Just help yourself right now. I release with ease. Allow the sound, the sacred sound, to help you to release. And close your eyes and really breathe in the sound. Doesn't that feel fabulous? It feels fabulous for you. Ah, just breathe that in. And just allow the sound to help you to release. To help you in your time between eclipses. <laughs> How does that feel? <laughs> I wonder if I'm doing it for myself or for you. It just feels so nice. <laughs> it, it makes me feel happy and joy. And this is the joy I like to share with my clients and my students. And with you, my friends here on Facebook. Can you feel it? Yes? Can you feel my joy? Your time between eclipses. I can feel that. Just take that in. Close your eyes. Yes. And feel that laughter and the joy and release the anger and the frustration and the blocks you may have. Really feel that joy. And breathe in joy. And breathe out joy. Oh. <laughs> I'm tripping. I'm tripping. And what have I had today? A juice and my sacred water. Because every full moon and new moon, I create sacred water and I sort of use it. I fill it. And, you know. So I take the bottle and I energize it. So if you come to the moon meditation and you're online, you can um, energize your bottle of water and take it with you. It's quite beautiful. Um, so this uh, full moon, I'll be holding it on Zoom, 
and also for those who want to in my home here so um i will put the link below and if you're going to come you need to let yanni know <laughs> so we can organize it i have two people who've flown in from europe who want to come here so i'm holding it in my flat i normally hold it on zoom i thought i'd make an exception this is quite an intensive for me Okay, uh, Sanov Shah says, so healing, love you, smile, <laughs> love you, smiling, thank you. <laughs> yes, oh, I was going to drink my water, it's my sacred water. So, um, I'm going to say goodbye, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I hope it's been helpful. Please share, please comment, um, please tell me how you found it. Okay, and I just want to talk about it. I'll put the link for the uh, meditation below. And uh, oh, here's a testimonial from a client. This evening was powerful and clear. More affirmations aligned perfectly to the sequence of signs and events that took me here. Beautiful sh to share these sacred steps. These healings with the circle. Love and blessings for you all. And that's from Mitakai Oyasi, Waki. And then somebody's come with a reminder. I remember our full moon meditation in Egypt thousands of years ago, which was truly beautiful and unforgettable experience. And the healing you did to me on the plane going home. You have magic hands. Thank you. That's Anne Met. So thank you. These are just people saying things. Um, I feel I have achieved clarity and direction in my life. Thank you so much for all your help and extra time and patience. Much love. That's Tanya. So it's nice when um, I, I receive that the work that I do, which is the divine work, which is me, it's, it's, it's working with hands of light, my spirit guide. And that, that's hands of light. Okay, that's hands of light, my spirit guide. I'm working with the ascended masters like Vishnu, God, Buddha, and a great spirit and bringing in all my knowledge. I was looking at all my certifications and everything with the time between eclipse to identify who I am and who I'm becoming. And I, was, I had this long list. Thought, wow, I've done so much study. So the time between eclipses asks you to look at your life. Where are you? What have you done? And what way are you going to be? So um, um, I had... a. a a session with um, a, um, a, a, a client of mine and uh, she said Tokes I want to help you uh, because you've been going through so much she said and she came and spent half a day with me almost a day and she went she gave me some suggestions of my services and packages and I thought wow exactly what I said I wanted to do on the new moon to have it completed or some idea. So it was nice that the, I said it and the universe sent someone who's actually an expert at it. <laughs> and we sat and I understood some things and I didn't understand some things. And she said, you know, this moon meditations you do, they're so great. I've been attending them, my life has changed. You've helped me with my business. It's, it's helped me with my relationship. And I was like, wow, that's so nice to hear. Um, what, let's, let's, you charge this. Let's do a package for the year. Let's do a package for six months. I went, oh, yes, I think you should do that because that way you have more engagement. And whether they turn up or not, they've paid for the year. And you just send the recording to them. So I thought, oh, that's, that's a good thing. I can do that. You know, so I've got a, a new sort of package that's being created it's starting from now. So I have yearly... You can book for the year for meditations. We make it much cheaper. We've got 45% discount or something like that, or 20% discount or whatever. Anyway, so we've got one year. You pay for a whole one year for new meditations. And whether or not you come, you get the, uh, the meditations in your inbox. You can pay for six months. Or you can just pay, uh, is it three months? For half a year and one year and just pay for the one uh, 
meditation for Tamil. That's all. I want. And then you could join my mailing list. And then I'll keep you informed about what it is that you need to do. Um, hello, Alda Lynn. Nice to have you here. Yeah. Oh, Sonal says, thank you very much. Feel more energized and balanced. Your love is pure. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you. Nice to hear. Because I've been going through my own solar eclipse and lunar eclipse and time between eclipse emotions. And all of you know that. I haven't hidden it. Why should I? It's real life. It's my life. And I'm proud of it with my pain and my joy and my suffering. I own it. For in the chaos and in the unhappiness is my honeymoon. It's my chanting that I'm doing. Nam Yoringa, if you're chanting Ami Tofu, I'm going to the church, going everywhere, chanting at the Greek Orthodox Church, not understanding a word. So doing things that will help Patrick journey on and also help me to heal and also help me in the service I provide, provide all of you so I can be a pure source of love and light and joy. Okay, that's it. <laughs> So I'm going to sound the bell again, and then I'm going to say all your names if I can see them, if it allows me to see them. And if I don't say your name, please forgive me. I cannot see it. But you are now in the sound of this gong of a child. Sonal Shah, Ben Chai, Alderline. Mark, Perry Cliss, Corinne Eaglin, Suzanne Marchbank, Selda Goodwin, Mer Kutlu, Jenny Isidore, Rui, Ryoko. I can't see anymore. Please forgive me. But you're here. And those of you watching that I can't see, I greet you. I greet you. I greet you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I wish you love, light, and joy as you process your time between eclipses. I hope this has been a way to shed some light of what shed light on what you may be going through, and it has helped and empowered you to continue and not give up on your life and not give up on yourself. I will not give up on you. I am not giving up on you. I believe in you. I love you. I am here for you. Bye. And thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please share. Bye. I love you. <laughs>